Hey my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Recently I've tested both the 3.5 liter twin turbocharged EcoBoost Ford Explorer and the Hemi powered 5.7 Dodge Durango RT. Now I think it's time to take both of these test drives and put them together so we can see how they stack up face to face. When they styled the Platinum, they didn't really go crazy and make it look completely different than the standard Explorer. In fact, from across the parking lot, you might have a hard time telling this from the rest of the line. What they did do, though, is they really tuned into the finishes, giving it more of a premium look and details. And that starts with its own grille here, which has a satin chrome finish. That satin chrome also down there on the lower fascia. Headlights, these are LED headlights with daytime running lamps and signature light-ups that really look nice when you're going down the road. The wheels are also larger, 20-inch wheels with their own unique design. Now the Sport does have 20-inch wheels, but a little bit different style there. Down the side here, you can see that those satin chrome accents continue down on the lower rockers, the mirror caps, as well as those door handles. As we come down the side here and around to the back, you know, the only thing I really think they could have done to make this look more premium is perhaps body color down there low instead of that black plastic. But that said, the premium look does continue with more of the satin chrome trims. You can see that up there on the roof rails. And down here, you've got a nice skid plate design just like up front and big, huge dual exhaust outlets. On the matter of styling, the Dodge Durango RT does set itself apart from the standard Durango line in a couple different ways. First of all, we've got body color trims here and there all around. Here, these are 20 inch wheels and a pretty nice looking satin finish that especially with this color, they really sort of blend in almost in a body color look. Body color, it continues up front here around the grille. The grille surround, the lower fascia, and especially down on that lower fascia, there's a more aggressive splitter down there that's also body color. One thing of note you can see is a big radar sensor that's down on that lower grille, and that's because this does have the package with all the advanced driver aids. Headlights on this one, they're also blacked out, and these are the upper line headlight on this, an HID projector beam headlamp. Not xenon, not LED, but they do look pretty nice, and they have a really nice LED driving light. Coming down the side of the Durango, one of the things you can see that really does make it look a little bit longer, a little bit sleeker with this one is that one inch lower ride height with the RT suspension. Now out here at the back, this has what they call the racetrack tail lamps, full length tail lamp assembly and it has an LED light up that's very distinctive at night. I don't know if you can see it too well here in my daytime picture, but it really does look good and it's something that's really becoming sort of a Dodge trademark, at least lately on the performance products. Down in the lower fascia you can see we've not only got dual exhaust, but there's a removable panel down there, perfect for when you're using a trailer hitch. Up here at the top, you also have a built-in spoiler that's standard equipment. Under the hood is the most powerful engine in its class, a 365 horsepower twin turbocharged EcoBoost V6 at 3.5 liters. With 350 pound-feet of torque, it comes with a fully automatic all-wheel drive system and a six-speed automatic transmission and standard equipment. So how does it go? And 60. It's pretty powerful. It moves this thing pretty good for being as heavy as it is. 365 horsepower sounds like a lot, but it's not Mustang GT acceleration. One thing I will point out is you notice how quiet it is. It doesn't really make a lot of racket. This is a very quiet vehicle inside. A lot of that sound deadening, but these EcoBoosts actually don't make a lot of noise unless they go to the trouble to make them noisy, give them sound, and they really didn't do that here. This really does fit the luxury image that goes along with the Platinum here. Now this transmission, the six speed, it can be a little bit rough shifting sometimes, mostly in stop and go traffic around town. But as you saw just now, I have it in sport mode. I use the paddle shifters. They work pretty responsively and that's always a good thing, especially in American vehicles. They tend to be the worst at giving you a responsive paddle shifter. And these actually did pretty good. I'm impressed in that way. All the power and fun this has does come at the cost of fuel economy though. This is rated at 18 mpg combined and that's exactly what I got in my week of driving with it, even with a little bit of having fun. Though it is what's promised, it's still pretty thirsty. 
What's under the hood here, of course, being the RT, it's the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. It's been around quite a while with Chrysler products and Dodge. Here, 360 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. It has an eight-speed torque flight automatic transmission. And it also does have the cylinder cutoff that lets it run down on four cylinders when you don't need the extra power, like when you're coasting on the freeway, when you roll into the throttle, it really pops those cylinders back on pretty imperceptibly. That does help the fuel economy here, giving it 14 MPG city, 22 MPG highway, and 17 MPG combined. So the big question always is, how does it go? <laughs> And 60. Woo! Okay, speeding. All right, so here's the thing. It sounds awesome, doesn't it? Nice V8 growl, and it really, it really growls under that hood. The transmission does a very good job of delivering shifts, and I do have it in sport mode. That's why you can hear the engine continuing to rev a little bit. Um, the thing is, is this is a very heavy SUV, 5,000 plus pounds. So because of that. Not quite as quick as you're going to get in the Challenger or in the Charger RT, but it does give you that V8 fun that you're going to come here for. It's just a little bit of a trade-off because the thing weighs a lot. Now, that said, again, transmission very good. There's paddle shifters here, even though I didn't use them, because this dial sucks. 2018, that's going away, by the way, I'll point out. There is a T-shifter coming for everybody that hates that stupid thing down there, and it will have an auto-stick shifting capability. But the thing that really surprised me about this more than anything this week is a fuel economy because it's rated to 17 combined. But even though I've been doing the speeding thing, just like you just saw a lot, I still managed 19 MPG this week with it. So I'm pretty darn impressed with this powertrain. Now we've got all the horsepower and the barn burning out of the way, we can talk a little bit about how this thing rides and handles. Now this does have a slightly stiffer suspension than you're gonna find on the standard Explorer to handle this extra horsepower. And the 20 inch wheels and tires, also a little bit more performance oriented. So what does that mean? Well, it means you can throw this thing into a corner a little bit faster than you can the normal Explorer, but it's still pretty softly sprung. You do have pretty high center of gravity and there's still quite a bit of roll, quite a bit of pitch. So if you try to drive it too aggressively, especially throwing it into a curve at speed, you're going to get a white knuckle moment you might not have expected. This just isn't meant for that. Now when it comes to ride, very quiet. I'm on a noisy patch of highway here and even with these larger wheels and tires, the road noise isn't too bad at all. It feels pretty stable. I'm not getting a lot of float that's normally associated with big Fords. One thing I will point out is this one has this moonroof and I'm getting quite a bit of wind noise from that, especially at freeway speeds. If you go 70, 75, that thing makes quite a bit of noise. So we've established that this does have some muscle car cred when it comes to what powers it and how it sounds, but how does it handle? Well, we're in a 5,000 pound plus SUV. That's the first thing. It does have the lower suspension. It does have all the good stuff on the spec sheets, a short long arm, independent front suspension, a five link rear suspension, independent of course, big 20 inch wheels, low profile tires, all of the stuff that you'd expect on a muscle car. But it's still an SUV, right? I mean, you throw it into a corner and you can feel this thing, it's got weight. That's really where it's at. Now I will hand it to them. They've given it a pretty good sharp feel when you're driving out on a back road at speed. A lot of that does go to the 20 inch wheels. Steering doesn't have a lot of feel in it. You don't get a lot of feedback that really tells you what's going on in terms of the tires. But the ride is solid, it is quiet, and I suspect when you're towing a trailer, it's going to be pretty stable, which is part of having the SUV thing. So when it comes to handling, you know, we're not quite like a muscle car in the sense that it's sporting to where you can really go crazy, but you can do more with this out here on a back road than you can with the standard Durango. All right, so in the end here, these two vehicles, while they can be compared to one another, really aren't apples to apples. After all, the Ford Explorer is a front-wheel drive-based, all-wheel drive crossover SUV. Dodge Durango, well, that has a big V8 in it, and it's rear-wheel drive-based, and it can also be had in all-wheel drive. So they're quite a bit different in how they're put together and what they're actually like to drive, but they can be compared on the spec sheet and in the showroom. So my take on the both is that uh, they both really offer something so different, it's really hard for me to say one's better than the other. It really depends on your preferences, probably brand preferences. 
But the good news is, is they are the only two American branded three row SUVs that you can really call high performance and be able to go out and tow a boat with or something like that. So I want to know what you think. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. What's your favorite between these two? Also, you can see both of the test drives for either one of these vehicles in a much more detailed way that we've done here within the last year. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride.